G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and the football come down for round 12. It'll be a short video this week, uh, A, because there weren't that many games, and secondly, not a whole heap of comments. Um, so if you could do me a favor, if you enjoy this concept of the football come down, just chuck a like on the video, leave a comment. I imagine the views on this will be low because you know not every team played, but I wanted the football come down to be a community-based show where everyone contributes, and I realized that it's probably flagged a little bit in recent times, almost certainly because of my inconsistency with my travel, etc. but... From now on, I'll be able to do the football come down every week. So just let me know if you enjoy this kind of content, just drop a comment or something. I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, the premise of this is to review, short and sharp, the weekend of games. And largely, I'd like to focus on the comments from you guys. And uh, as such, there weren't a whole heap. So we'll just talk about the games uh, as I saw them. So it started off with an interesting game between Port Adelaide and Carlton. This was a big clash. And Carlton were fantastic in this game. And it kind of just speaks to this inconsistency from everyone across the league like if you look at the ladder there's one team that's been consistent this year and Sydney are 11 and 1 or something like that maybe 10 and 1 and you don't need to win you know virtually all your games to be considered consistent but Essendon's in second you know okay they've been relatively consistent but then you've got Geelong and Carlton like Port Adelaide still in the mix the D's have slipped out of the eight Fremantle's up in sixth anyway I'm kind of rambling at this point but I've never seen such a hard to place top eight to ten teams at this point of the season in a long time it feels like but either way Carlton has certainly made a statement to remind everyone they're still around and, and capable of beating good teams on their home deck and that is a this is a good validating win for them and in particular the way they won the balanced nature of it. I know that they've been dealing with injuries over the course of the last couple of months, etc. But it was a very well-rounded performance. In, in particular, I think, you know, you look at it, what Carlton's strength was over the last few years, maybe last year in particular, under Michael Voss. It's their scores from stoppage game, their clearance game. They've got some powerful midfielders, not necessarily physically, but in terms of the way they play. Interestingly, they are below average for scores from stoppage this year, but absolutely smashed Port Adelaide in this metric in this game. But it was, like I said, a balanced performance. They also kicked seven goals from turnover. In particular, in the second half, Carlton sort of clicked into that top gear and you know reminded us that they were going to be a very good team. And I imagine are in the mix later in the season. Port Adelaide could couldn't really get going and it's kind of been the tail of their season. I think the second quarter was good. Conversion once again letting them down. I think in the second quarter they were playing really well and had seven shots at goal and only keep the one goal. Georgiatis was good. He hit four goals but generally speaking it wasn't quite enough for long enough for Port Adelaide and they couldn't take the most of their opportunities. Some individuals for Carlton. Uh, Patrick Cripps had one of the most impactful 22 possession games I've seen. Two big goals I think in the last quarter. Uh, Sam Walsh fantastic again. This guy's been unreal since he's Come back into the team. Like what Sam Walsh is doing, considering you know two years in a row he hasn't had a preseason, the the velocity at which he's just hit this season has been fantastic. Thirteen tackles, eight clearances. Nick Newman was good as well. Tom DeConing as well, big impact in the ruck, I thought, and allowed what well, was a factor in them getting their stoppage game up and running. So big win for Carlton. Port Adelaide, the flat track bully tag will attract them, and, and probably rightfully so at the moment. There's a big gap between their best and the worst. In the second game of the round, the dogs were too good for Collingwood. I did not tip this. I got both of my first two tips wrong this week, um, which I'm annoyed about, but I'm not shocked to see the dogs come up. And I know Collingwood are dealing with some injuries, but you know, I think the takeaway from me for this game is actually just two individual players like at the top of their game. One of them is Bogdan Pelly. You know, he'd probably get the three votes. What he had 38 touches, 10 clearances, and two goals. Just reminding everyone that he's still an absolute superstar. But Nick Dacos as well. I, I don't know if I'm sure everyone knows because I think it's been reported on, but Nick Dacos, particularly in the last month or so, has taken his game to the next level. And if there was any doubt about whether this guy can win his own footy, I think he had 32 touches. I think your club record for clearances, 16, he's playing his legitimate on-baller now, two goals. He's still doing all his damaging outside stuff. But I think I read as well that he had 27 of those 32 touches contested. There's no doubt about this guy now. Like, not, not that I really had any doubt, but I think... I didn't expect him to elevate this quickly, and I have to say, Nick Dacos is an absolute superstar. This is a good win for dogs, you know. Again, there's been some maybe some lackluster performances throughout the season. But I mean, you look at the loss to Hawthorne. I think that was the one that raised alarm bells. Everyone re reignited the conversation around beverage. But you look at what Hawthorne's doing now. They sit five and seven. They're one of the best sides in the comp on current form. Like, I don't want to play Hawthorne anytime soon. And that's West Coast. But 
you know, if I'm Melbourne, I don't want to play them. If I'm Collingwood, I don't want to play them. So, you know, looking at that contextually, the Bulldogs, are, you know, they're going all right. And it is worth mentioning, Collingwood's injury situation is blowing out a little bit. You know, Penelbury's out for a month. We do have a comment here from Rogue Riot that says, injuries make me sad. Rogie is a devout Collingwood man. And yeah, I think my check's injury was quite recent as well. That Joe Richards comes in and now he's out for a month or something like that to go with his abdomen. It is piling up and creating adversity for Collingwood. And I do think that they, you know, it was an honourable loss considering that. Other individuals for this game, you know, Bailey Dale had another 35. Trelaw had 11 clearances, again, continuing a very, very good season. I think Sam Darcy is an absolute star. You know, he's rubbed out, you know, I think for a couple of weeks with that MRO situation, but three goals. Like, I, he's also performing better at this age than I'd expected. But the Bulldogs' stoppage game is also very strong. They're number one from scores from stoppage. They're second in the league now for clearances, second in the league for inside 50s. They're tracking along okay. I, I think they still sit outside of the eight. But like I said, it's a bit of a hot mess. No team can be consistent at the moment. And they're still absolutely in the finals race. Now let's talk about the Hawks. Um, I tipped this one correctly. I didn't really have any doubt Hawthorne were going to win this because I think their form has been so compelling over the last little stretch. And they led by 50 points halfway through the last quarter or something like that. And they only won by 27 points. But, you know, they're looking bloody damn good. They lost their first five. And it's similar to last year. Almost even more dramatic than last year where, you know, I think it took them to round 10 last year. They beat the Eagles by 20 goals. And they look much better after that. But I think the, the form since the first five games, they won five of the last seven. You know, I, I don't know if I'll get time for a power rankings this week, but, you know, they're probably going to rank pretty highly on that in current form. But this was a pretty dominant performance for the, for the Hawks. You know, 63 inside 50s to 41 tells the story. And it's also interesting looking at the top five possession winners of this game were all, you know, Crows, in particular midfielders, guys like Crouch, Saligo. I think Lockie Scholl was in there as well. So they were getting their hands on the footy. They just couldn't do anything meaningful with it. And Hawthorne, by contrast, were very, very polished with taking their opportunities. And on that note, speaking of being polished while taking their opportunities, Dylan Moore, if you weren't already convinced this guy's a gun, I think this game, I don't want to say a breakout, but I don't remember him being so dominant in one game. Five goals and 27 touches, kicked 21 goals three this year. He's a man that takes his opportunities, uses the ball well. Um, outstanding performance from him. Tough loss for the Crows, but honestly, I do think if you look at Hawthorne's form right now, going down by 27 points, not the end of the world, I think... Adelaide still have a lot to get from this season. You know, much has been said of him losing 11 in a row, I think, since the 2017 grand final. I think that's the case. It doesn't look good. But, you know, how many rebuilding sides, and Adelaide have been rebuilding for most of that period, have won many games at the MCG? I don't think that's a big deal. But the mid-forward connection's still a little bit off. Um, didn't help that Dawson, I think, you know, came in under an injury cloud, only got the 15 touches in this game. Hawthorne were definitely the better side, so, jeez. Look out for Hawthorne. A couple of comments here. Leon Mead says, 2014 granny repeat. Hawthorne versus Sydney. Now, I, I just, I, I think Hawthorne are coming from way too far back. But it was an interesting stat. Um, I think Hoyney said on SEN, Hawthorne are like the sixth best team ever for ground balls, um, which is kind of fascinating. And all the other five teams either won a flag or were around the mark. And, you know, since he said that, Hawthorne are looking shit hot. Like, they're one of the hottest teams in the comp right now. I don't want to blow it out of proportion because it's a seven game period where they've won five games and you know I don't even think that well I wouldn't bet on them making finals at the moment they're just looking really good at the moment and I, I presume this comment's a little bit facetious but either way you know you've got to be happy with how the Hawks are tracking if you're a fan Mike by contrast is angry at the Crows not happy Jan didn't elaborate on what exactly is frustrating I think on on the surface of it losing to the Hawthorne at the moment by 27 points at the MCG I don't think that's actually too shameful, but obviously there's some issues there with Adelaide and getting their midfielders to connect with their forward line. And I don't know, it's been a pretty handy stretch of form. You know, they just won the previous game by 100 points. So I think the Crows can shake this one off. The next game is West Coast hosting St Kilda at Optus Stadium in a um, frustrating game. You know, hard, hard not to feel frustrated as an Eagles fan. So that have impacted my perception, but yeah, an interesting one. Mason Wood, fantastic, four goals, 22 possessions. And one of the more impactful performances was probably Windhager, who is really coming along. Um, you know, probably a little bit understated, but I think St Kilda, in a season where not a lot has gone right um, in terms of their expectations, I think Windhager's going well, and he did a great job on Harley Reid. And I, I, th I think it's a testament to Harley Reid getting tagged like he, he was. He had 13 touches in the second term and six clearances. That is absurd for an 18-year-old. Fantastic stuff. But nonetheless, a learning opportunity for him, quelled by a, a good tagging performance. They also had... 
Wangadi Miller, a gun player, seven rebounds in this game. Sinclair, Roel Marshall did pretty well. You know, I, I thought that Flynn and Williams held up okay, considering it's Flynn's first game in. But I actually captained Roel Marshall. He didn't actually do as well as I expected. But nonetheless, he still won eight clearances. If you want my more in-depth thoughts on this game from a purely Eagles perspective, I do have an Eagles channel called True Eagle, and I have reviewed this game already. But, you know, while there was some frustration at the result because West Coast fans are now a little bit more accustomed to playing well at home, given some of our recent form there, there were still some good signs in this game. I think in the third quarter, or maybe it was in the second quarter, we were up by 14 points. We were winning clearances 26 to 17. Contested ball, we were up. Inside 50s, we were up. Things were looking okay, and St. Kilda just ran out the game a little bit better. And I actually do think this is a good win for St. Kilda, even though, you know, West Coast aren't the most imposing side at the moment. I think it took some guts to come over and win a game that they needed to, and potentially it could be the catalyst for something more. I, I still think there's a lot that the Saints can get out of this season. You just have to look back 12 months to where Carlton and GWS were. I'm not saying the St. Kilda necessarily have that same potential, but they did finish sixth last year. So maybe this could be a catalyst for them. Another bright spark for them I will mention is Paddy Dow was pretty good. He had eight clearances to three-quarter time, um, you know, for a guy trying to, you know, re-establish himself at AFL level. You know, that's a, that's a real positive for them as well. So an important win for St. Kilda um, and for West Coast, you know, I guess our draft pick stays all right. A few comments. Eagles fan says West Coast were robbed. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with that. You know, some frustrating umpiring calls, but the better team won on the day. AFL Snap says Harley Reid suspended. Yes, he's been given two weeks. Um, and Red Lightning says if Wilson was 15 centimeters closer to Harley, it would have been fine. Probably. I, I will wait and see. I, I thought it was worth one week. Um, and it's been given to. So hopefully West Coast challenged that. Geelong also took on Richmond this weekend, and this game threatened to be one of the most baffling, bewildering boilovers I've ever seen when Richmond got up 29 points uh, in the second quarter of this game. I thought, surely not. Uh, but respect to Richmond, hey. Like, I think they've now used 40 players this season, and that was before this game. And LaFau's now done an ACL. Like, he was a really interesting little recruit for them, and I think he's been playing well as a 26-year-old convert. How many ACLs have Richmond done now? I don't know how much of that is conditioning. I just don't know. That's, that's ignorance on my part. But my God, this is bizarre. Um, but, you know, also Pickett's done a calf. That's frustrating. So that 40 is likely to become 42. So considering they lost by 119 points a couple of weeks ago, to get five goals up against the Geelong side that is undoubtedly not in great form, still... Fair play to you, Richmond. That's, that's a reasonable result. The second quarter, the Cats completely steamrolled them, and they'll be hoping that is a catalyst for them getting some confidence back because, what, did they lose four in a row and they threatened to be five? But they kicked 14-6 to three goals, two in the second half. And Ollie Dempsey also had a fantastic game, three goals and 27 possessions. And you, the Rising Star race is now blown out. You know, Sam Darcy and Harley Reid both been suspended, presumably ineligible. Um, Ollie Dempsey's had a great... Great season so far and a really good performance. Jack Bowes as well, put in the midfield, you know, probably one of those players that's been highlighted is, you know, is he a backman? Is he a midfielder? And you do imagine Geelong will have a midfield transition over the next few years. So him winning 10 clearances against a depleted side is still a relatively promising effort. Now for the most stunning result this weekend, Melbourne lost to Fremantle by 92 points. Now I had tipped Fremantle. I thought Fremantle were going to win, but I am staggered by this margin. With a team in Fremantle who is not bad, but has not probably scored 141 points, I think in about five years, like five and a half years. And, you know, Melbourne's defense, I think Jake Lever didn't play, did he? But either way, Melbourne are not accustomed to conceding 141 points. In fact, it's Melbourne's biggest losing margin in the 172 games Goodwin has been coach and the highest score they've conceded in that same time frame. It was a very complete performance from Fremantle. They dominated at stoppage. They're a fantastic clearance side. And I'm not sure where they rank. In fact, they're number one for clearance uh, by differential. And interestingly, three times the second best, who I believe is the Western Bulldogs off the top of my head. They're a dominant clearance side by differential. Now, clearances are only one element of that, but their young midfield, which we already knew was good, or at least I always did, is, is becoming dominant. And they dominated a good midfield team in the Demons. So you factor that with guys like Luke Ryan, Alex Pierce, um, Jordan Clark, probably had one of his best games at AFL level. They were fantastic. 68 inside 50s to 37. I think the Demons actually do have a real problem with inside 50s. I think they do rank pretty low for inside 50 differentials. But yeah, nothing went right for Melbourne. It's been an interesting three weeks. There's a 38-point win over the Saints in that time, but they got bested by West Coast. And now this, this is the most concerning 
not because of any disrespect to Fremantle, but 92 points is jarring, and that's one of the biggest losses by any team this year. 444 disposals Fremantle had, which was about 80 more than their opposition. They still out-tackled them by one. They also used the ball at 80%. Now, Fremantle is also, interestingly, the number one disposal efficiency team in the comp. They do also handball more than kick, more so than any other side, but either way, that was interesting. But 48 clearances to 23. Fremantle are third in the league for scores from stoppage. They won the contested possessions by 42, 142 marks. This game was just an absolute butchering and potentially could be the catalyst for Fremantle like coming of age to some extent, you know, 2022 might've been their coming of age. 2023 didn't go so well, but it could be a catalyst for something real in the second half of the year. They sit six on the ladder. I don't think they've been wonderfully consistent, but like I've said earlier this video, no team has, and they've thrown themselves back right in the mix for finals. You'd have to say that at this point. This is a very eyebrow-raising win. All right, let's finish off with Gold Coast beating Essendon by 11 points. Uh, again, I got my tip correct for this game. Uh, I would have been very impressed if Essendon won this because Gold Coast are very good at home, and that actually caps off their seventh or eighth win now at home. I think maybe maybe the seventh. Eighth on the ladder, seventh win at home. Um, so again, a bit of a home ground fortress for them. Their midfield has got to work. Uh, Raul, Anderson, and Miller combined for 22 clearances. Ben Long was good with four goals, and I think I think that was his 100th game. Uh, and Ben King as well, equal again for the Coleman with another four. It was a good game. Essendon was still in it. I think they were five points down with a few minutes to go um, before Gold Coast got the win in the end. But Sexton, 30 touches, 700 meters gained. Uh, interestingly as well, the Suns are actually the, the lowest clanger differential team in the league. So they actually make the least mistakes relative to their opposition than any other team in the league. This was a very even game. In fact, you know, if you look at, it was probably inaccuracy that possibly cost the Dons. They were a little bit wayward with some of their opportunities. They had four extra scoring shots, lost the game by 11 points. When you kick 11 goals, 14, that may have been the difference in this game. But either way, a very good win. For the Suns, I would have been very, very impressed if Essendon had won this. Not because I don't rate them, I just think the Gold Coast that Metricon at the moment, or Heritage Bank, People's First, whatever it's called, it's a tough ask at the moment. And um, I think Essendon can hold their heads high. That was a tough game, and uh, they just came out the wrong side of the ledger. We have one final comment here from Sean Christie, who says, rename the round upset round. So I'm trying to think, my tipping actually went well this week. So I got five out of seven. The first two I got wrong were Port Adelaide losing to Carlton. I think that was a 50-50. The Dogs beating Collingwood, you could say, is an upset. Other than that, you know, I got all my tips right. I tipped the Saints. Um, Richmond nearly beat Geelong. Oh, and Fremantle was another big upset. So, yeah, a few few things. But, you know, this time of year can be quirky. I think different clubs, you know, have different training regimes. And there's a school of thought that some teams try to ramp up their training loads to prepare for the rest of the season. That would certainly explain why Melbourne looking rubbish at the moment. I also suspect maybe West Coast is doing this. Maybe that's me wishful thinking. It's been, you know, not not the best two weeks in terms of how we've run our games. But anyway, it, it, this time of year just produces some interesting results and uh, yeah, the ladder's a hot mess at the moment, but it'd be very interesting to see what happens next. But let me know in the comments, guys. Let me know if you want me to keep doing this show for a start. That'd be great. And uh, for now, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.